Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. In the gospel of salvation is God reaching out to man. The gospel of the kingdom is man responding back to God. You met my need by your show of love, but I know that you have a desire and I respond back as proof that I love you. Are we together now? And the Bible says the, what we call the end times, the signs of the end as we call it, um, theologically speaking, they have argued that there are several signs of the end times the prophet spoke, but according to scripture, there is only one sign of the end time. All of those things that are signs, the Bible says they are the beginning of birth pains. I'll never have an opportunity to understand what that means, but the, at least I know that for a woman, beginning of birth pains doesn't mean that you are ready to deliver. It just means you are around. Is that true? But there's one sign. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness not as a sermon to all nations and then after that the end will come so the coming of christ is not determined by him ah it's too early oh. you are supposed to be my friends this morning i mean <laughs> The coming of Christ is determined not by time, is determined by the completion of an agenda, prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. It is, it is one of the deep religious confusions that we inherited for a long time. That philosophy that God can just veto men and just show up. No. Even the concept of the thief in the night. Holy Spirit, help me. I think I should just sing to him to calm him down. So we go to our message today. You know, many believers have been deceived for many, many years that Jesus is coming um, how? As a thief in the night. It matters how we learn. I continue to say this, and it matters how that we we are mentored. Jesus is coming as a thief in the night, not to the church. He cannot come as a thief in the night to the church. It doesn't make sense. A husband does not come back home as a thief. No, listen, that's not even it. Let me just, can I just clear this before we get to the word? We are believers. 
A Christian is one who has submitted to the authority of the word of God more than any opinion. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This is where this confusion came from. It's good to read your Bible. Let's, let's, go, let's go there. Most believers don't read their Bibles. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. <laughs> Are we ready? We'll read it together. And I'm not going to talk. When we get to the place where I will talk, I will talk. One, two, go. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need. Please just go back there. You have no need, verse 1, that I write unto you, verse 2, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. This is where many people stop. Verse 3, for when they, not you, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. This is the deliverance. Next verse. Read it if you're a Christian. But ye who are of the fold, brethren, you are living in the light. You are not in darkness that that day should overtake you. The Bible says the coming of Christ will be in the similitude of the days of Noah. The flood did not take Noah by surprise. The ark was made of gopher wood. Three stories. All the animals came in. When they came in, God himself closed the door and the flood started. Revival, revival. Let's go to revival. <laughs> Let's go to revival. I mean, it's good to come to church and be delivered. Real deliverance is preached. So we began to discuss that there are ordinances of revival. That means there are authorized spiritual pathways to both activate and preserve the move of God. A few things that you may want to note, I'm sure that there should be a way of getting these teachings you know, so I'm, I'm pleased you may want to get and listen to it again and again and again. We did say that it is very usual for the last or current move of God to fight the next move of God. If you have the time, listen to my teaching why revivals die. There is only one reason why revivals die. The humanity of men. The fact that those who pioneer and sustain these revivals are human. The, the, the reality of our humanity interrupts God's program. And most times revivals die. So we picked on the principles. Number one yesterday was what? If you remember, prayer. The ministry of prayer. And I said a few things that I want to reiterate, very important, that the primary assignment of prayer is not for supplications. The primary assignment of prayer is not even for warfare. That prayer as designed by God was a system of edification. It's a mechanism by which believers transit. When you pray, it's akin to molting. The way a snake molds, you come out of the lower version of yourself into another dimension. For as long as our idea of prayer is just an instrument of warfare or an instrument of receiving things, our prayer life will not be rich. Because you will be frustrated by results you are trying to look at. Are we together now? Yes edification he says in Acts chapter 1 you shall receive power that when the Holy Ghost comes whatever comes with him is called power in Acts chapter 2 what came with him is tongues Acts chapter 1 he says the Holy Ghost is coming but he's not coming empty handed that whatever you see him come with the name of that thing is power 
in Acts chapter 2, the name of what he brought, the Bible called it tongues. So there is a relationship between that tongues he brought and spiritual power. Hallelujah. It is important that believers pray. Bring me a weak believer, weak, confused believer and submit that believer to a system of prayer, correct Bible-based prayer. Give that person one month, you will see that fear, limitation, timidity, it will just fade away. Strength. I can tell you why believers are very weak because we do not pray there is a testimony of prayer upon a man you know that this man is a man of prayer he may not be a man of knowledge but as far as the strength and the stamina is concerned you can know a healthy prayer life is discernible you understand there is a light there is there is you can sense the impulses of a healthy prayer life. It's not by the huskiness of the voice. No. You can stand close to a man and know that this man, spirit man, is weak. Very, very weak. Even if knowledgeable. We need a lot of strength. We need a lot of strength for the journey ahead. We need a lot of strength. If you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. So if because of rent, you go back and harass God and say, God, I've been trying for you. It's as if you are not seeing me. Those things are symptoms of a level of transition that has not happened yet in prayer. That when you ascend in the ministry of prayer, you get to a point where you can sit in the midst of fire. And you are not talking to God about the fire. You are talking to God about what happens after the fire. As if the fire is not there. It's a level of maturity that is proof of your growth. So you see people sit down and they are counseling others and laughing. But when they tell you what they themselves are going through, you say, and you have the grace to counsel. Something happened to them in prayer. Another expression of prayer, and I'm glad we're adults here. Prayer is akin to a man knowing his wife. All right yes you it, it, it's 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 like it's like it's like intimacy a man knowing his wife that means that you expect an exchange in this case you are the bride and the husband the holy spirit who represents the presence of the father and jesus so there is a transference of virtue and possibilities you are impregnated with realities so you leave that prayer place with a dimension of energy. Like a woman receives seed. She doesn't advise the seed to start growing or to get attached to their womb. Programmed in that system, the, the seed knows what to do and the womb knows what to do. Her assignment is just to receive it. And by the next day, she doesn't want to eat something again. So something happens to you in the place of prayer. When you are done, you will very soon find out that you didn't have the courage to tell your friends no. By weekend, uh, no, not the former you. The former you will rush to that bar with speed. But now you are finding out that there is a greater fortitude. There is a grace that helps men to say no. And you can look at them and say, gentlemen, this is not me again. Prayer is powerful. The last official thing Jesus did before his passion was prayer. He went to Gethsemane and prayed and prayed. The Bible says in one of the synoptics that he prayed repeating the same words three times. If Jesus did not pray, you would have been surprised what would happen on the way to Golgotha because he was in every way a man. That means... The weariness of men. Look, let me tell you, all men are men. One of the systems that separates you as though not a man is the possibilities that you encounter in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. You can get up and pray and in that prayer, you can receive an impartation. It's like a vaccination. The joy of the Lord. 
as soon as you step into the office here comes a lousy person programmed by darkness to frustrate your day and the director says I've been looking at you be careful and ordinary you say sir don't shout at me like that or you are my younger brother it's just because but because you have been secured in the place of prayer you exhibit qualities that are not given to men a man should be angry but you look and say it's all right sir god bless you and they say don't be keeping quiet like this so this is nigeria you have been cultured i tell you why people behave as if they are not children of god something happens to you in the place of prayer most of our prayer life is not excited because it's, it's not exciting because it's need driven need driven as soon as you just quickly introduce yourself below god you are the lion of the tribe of judah you are the multi-breasted one you, all those things are preambles quickly so that you just and said okay lord i'm here now i'm here and you you stop even praying again and say lord i'm this one i'm not quoting any scripture again i'm here to talk to you about this issue how long will my husband keep behaving is it that you are not you know all those things they are wonderful there is a there is an aspect of prayer that can respond to petitions but you don't know the blessedness of prayer until you see how exciting it is when prayer is focused on transformation are, are, are we together now we just help the lady so it's very important for you to understand this believers don't pray believers don't pray I'm telling you this or believers pray wrongly you just go and hold on to someone's hold on to someone's building hold his window somewhere and you are crying and shouting you see I hope you are not embarrassed let me tell you sincerely we have to trust God for grace to help us to be wise the things of the spirit don't work like that let me teach you how success comes we're not discussing success but let me just this the moment you are seeking it you will never get it these things were never designed to be pursued I was teaching my people the other day listen let me tell you this life is dimensional as programmed by God and every dimension has the possibilities that are supposed to come are we together so call it level one two three four five if you are in level one in your understanding and perception and you want the result of level five if you get it and bring it here that level will fight it and send it out of your life you grow when you grow all the realities that accrue that level of growth will come to you success is attracted by who you are becoming not what you go, do and get no it's why many people fail our labor is to try to draw things that are in dimensions that are higher than our understanding and perception the assignment is to journey with the holy spirit as you transit to these realms everything around you that is lower than that realm will be instructed to leave you your contacts your friends your clothes your money everything there is a law that edits your life at every realm see this is why we are frustrated because some things we are doing there is a law that should be doing it but because we do not understand that they have been pre-programmed our worry over them understanding brings ease so you will see a young man for instance who is just starting life and insists that he must fly business class and while you are sitting there your realm is fighting it you know you are not supposed to be here your understanding how you know you are not there is only one aspect of your life is there when you grow everything grows you are in business class but your clothes are not for business class your mind is not for business class the recharge card in your phone is not for business it's proof that you you follow the window to be there when you are patient and you grow everything will grow together 
The same energy it takes to be fake is the same energy it takes to be real. So we are frustrated. That's why most of our prayer lives are full of requests and pain and shouting and saying, Lord, I can't believe this. We're in the same school with this person. What I saw today, I won't let you rest. The Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. You see, those kinds of scriptures, we, we just because the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak any language you want. A herbalist can use the Bible to destroy you. It's a prophetic book. So we have to be very careful. These needs and cares, many times, they come from the lusts that are enshrined in our hearts that were designed to be corrected in the place of prayer. Many things happen when we pray. The purging of the spirit, your motives are purged. The need to prove a point is eroded quickly because God helps you to understand that growth is something that is natural with men. That means I can live a former version of myself to another version. So when you see the former me, don't use the former me to judge how I will be tomorrow. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The average prayer life of a believer in Nigeria is need-driven. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that it makes no sense to pray for six hours asking for things. It doesn't make sense. Do you have that much prayer request? Or is God that deaf? If your prayer life is need driven, 20 minutes is fair. You are talking to an intelligent God. Rent, oh God. My wife, oh God. Very simple. You are, and, and you are ticking the list. So why will I pray for five hours? What am I asking for? But if the prayer is for intimacy and growth, just saying thank you alone can take one hour. Mm. This is how the mature pray. While you are there, oh God! And someone can just be thinking, your mercy, oh God. He's starting to pray, oh, look what you have done to me. Mighty God. And before you sing in tongues to start, you, that one is just knocking on the gate. <laughs> That's why people pray well during retreats. No prayer request. The angels are there. No request. I say, who is this man? I hope you know the angels study us too to know God more. The angels are not the highest of God's creation. Man is. So they depend on our interaction to know God the more too. And while the angels wait, the only vials they carry from us is an incense of worship and gratitude. For hours, you're just singing songs and blessing him. One more minute, pray in the spirit. Salakando pras kada barato sada balakato prandas kada bredege de bo shalakata empretos kaparus kada brehesh kada balanda kroska kratos kale bradish kale bredos azeneke tepa shalabrada kade balada balada bos. Remember, this is a training. It's a church service, but it's a training. Just a few seconds and you are done. Rabaris kabaranda balika pras kade baruta sada balakotos. Sanis Kabaranda Gadu Sabretes Kalabaruta Sadebeletus Salanandas Kabaratos Kabratis and Kapaharutasia Shabo Sabarus Kabarundas Kalabarutis In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Prayer, very powerful, gives your life focus and helps you to grow. Please, if there's anything you want to learn in this conference about prayer, is return to the place of prayer as an instrument of growth, intimacy, 
and transformation. More than an instrument of obtaining requests, more than an instrument of fighting demons, there is a place for them. But the larger pie is for your growth. Number two. Thank you for all those who went around just making things happen. God bless you. Let's get to the word. Number two. The second ordinance of revival. If you want to activate and also preserve the move of God. Write this down. The regular convergence of believers within a territory to be trained, equipped, empowered. You cannot have a revival and you cannot preserve a revival when there is no platform within a territory that makes for the regular convergence of believers for the purpose of equipping for the purpose of training, for the purpose of empowerment, and also a platform to receive the blueprint of the speakings and the dealings of God within that season. I will not be ignorant, he says, to bring you in remembrance of these things, although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. There is what God was doing, but there is what God is doing. And what God was doing can fight what he is doing. Let me tell you this, look at me. A territory is in trouble when there are no apostolic and prophetic platforms that make for the convergence of believers for the purpose of mentorship and growth. This was the strategy handed down by our fathers. More than internet connection. Are we together now? More than the ability to use online platforms and technology. You can know the spirit. When you see spiritual barrenness within a territory. It's a report card. It's showing you the absence of true apostolic and prophetic platforms. Within that territory. That makes for a system of convergence. Acts chapter 2. This is the model from verse 42. Just turn to your Bible. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts. It didn't say invent. There are ancient parts. These things are patterns. They are ordinances that preserve the move of God in the territory. Some of our fathers were not educated, but they had the privilege to walk with the Holy Ghost. And they captured these dimensions. Acts chapter 2. I'll read from verse 42. Hmm. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. Let me read it very quickly. And they continued. Everybody say continued. This is the early church. The model that was created for us. The early church. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in what prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men every man as every man had need 46 and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart 47 praising God and having favor with all people and then the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved there is a model that if compromised will never host God God is a God of patterns his patterns must be obeyed to host his glory. The regular convergence of believers. Listen, let me tell you this. It is the reason why I believe in excellence, but we must be careful to not lose the texture of the 
correct exegesis of the word when believers are gathered together. Let me tell you this. If you see the effect of losing out on God's patterns does not show in one year. It doesn't even show in five years. So you may think progress is being made. There are things that the church is and there are things the church is not. We must be careful to draw the line to know what the church is and what the church is not. The regular convergence of believers. Is God speaking to us? It's important. I believe in the internet. I believe in all of that. But we read Psalm 133 and it was prophetic. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says that state is like the head, the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, the priest. So there is priesthood in that kind of gathering. And then it says the system of transfer is that it starts from his head to his skirts to his body. And then it says there, not in that location, in that strategy, God has commanded the blessing. There are things you cannot obtain in your personal prayer life. There are things you cannot get alone. It happens when there is a convergence of believers for the purpose of mentorship, for the purpose of training. Not information, training. Mentorship is not a transference of information. Mentorship is a meticulous guiding of a man. It's more than just giving an information. Regular convergence of believers. As, 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 as you are here seated, remember your family. Let me tell you this. You know why, do you know sir, every time a nation has, a, has serious trouble, the correct way to deal with national issues is to go to the community. Because nations are made of communities. And every community is made of a family. So you address things that way. Dealing with things at a national level is a waste of time because every nation is broken into regions, communities, and the last bus stop is family. So when evil wants to ferment and get to a national, it starts from families, then if unhindered communities, then territories, then the nation. Every thief came from a family. Every troublemaker came from a family. Every family must be a reflection of a true church. A true church. I teach my people again and again. Priesthood must be demonstrated even at family level. When I talk of convergence like this, I don't necessarily just talk about meeting in platforms like this, which is important, but even in your home. There are men whose children have never seen them teach the word in the home. They've seen them count money. They've seen them argue about contracts. But not to count this. Imagine how it will be that your children are sleeping in the night and you get up as the priest of the home. Shabbos, Koparanda, Kata. From the parlor to every room. You are laying hands on everybody. You lay hands on your wife. She says, what's this? She says, no, no, no. It's priesthood. Sleep. It's my duty. I'm sanitizing the spiritual climate. You are not a man of God, though, but you are a priest. One day, let me tell you what will happen. When you get up, your small son will get up with you. He will cry and insist to follow you. This is mentorship. I tell you why they punish lecturers and pastors. Because people don't do their homework at home. And they transfer every kind of trouble and say, just go to church. Pastor Dele will sort everything about your life. Are we together? One day your child will follow you while you are praying. And one day when you travel, he will wake up by that time alone. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You'll be playing like a little boy. Lay hands on the mother. Lay hands on his toys. You think he's playing. Are we together? Where a father can sit with his family and say, look, once a week we are going to have Bible study. We will review what pastor taught. 
if you are under my roof, you are going to listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I have a lot of people by God's grace that I raise and train. Nobody under my roof will not serve my God. No. I'm not one of those that say, oh, it would be nice with the human right. If you are under my roof, you are going to serve my God. That's for sure. The day you're on your own, you can do what you want to do. But as far as it is under my roof, it's very important. Convergence of believers. When we were growing up, there were certain things we laugh at today that was the build-up of many of us. An average believer cannot tell you the books of the Bible. It looks little, but it's a serious issue. How many disciples um, um, does Jesus have? You hear how many? You say 21, how many? 22, 14. Another person will say three. You see, these things, they are not funny. It's a revelation of something we are losing. Hallelujah. People come to church and instrumentalists, when they finish playing, they will go and sit outside on a stone, browsing while preaching is going on. Once the man of God raises a song, they'll quickly come, sit on the drums, sit on this, play, and, and the pastors will quickly arrange things. And well, well, how now? Yesterday we discussed, you know, church. See, some of these things our fathers did, it looked crude. But in a bit to transit, we didn't know what to throw away and what to preserve. We just threw everything away. There are things we must bring back. You don't like what I'm teaching you? That's the price for revival. Though. Regular convergence. Number three. You want to mentor nations and territories and bring them to the Lordship of Christ. There will have to be an open display of real miracles, signs and wonders that go beyond the church walls. An open display of miracles, signs, wonders beyond the church walls. It creates convictions in the heart of men. The heart of the community. Acts chapter 19 verse 11. We are looking at the book of Acts. So you see it was prophetic. That pastor was saying study the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19 please. Verse 11. Let me read it. And God wrought special miracles. Say special miracles, please. By the hands of Paul. He says, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. And the disease departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit did leapt and so on and so forth. Verse 17, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus and fear came on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified 18 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 many of them also which used curious acts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found 50,000 pieces of silver 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Please look up. When pastor was sharing here about how the 1930 move started, you heard what he said. That apostle Babalola came out just to look for something to eat and saw a dead man. Let me tell you this. There is too much talking among believers. 
It is the reason why the world is tired. Do you know they look at Christianity as a nuisance to civilization? Because there's too much talking and little doing. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Real, genuine miracles and a pouring of signs, wonders, miracles, not by men of God, by believers beyond the church wall. One madman, popular madman, meets Jesus Christ and 10 cities, 10 cities are won within a moment. Let me tell you this. The way we are doing evangelism now, if God does not help us, even in 100 years, we will not win half of our territory. You see the burden it takes to beg people? <clears throat> that strategy is deformed. We have to trust God for a dimension there is no human being who sees the spectacular and ignores it as a common sight. No. John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in an interruption of the course of men by an agency that is higher than this dimension. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can bring notable miracles. I believe the dead can rise. Many of you have heard the things that God has done in and through our ministry. Let me tell you sincerely. Well, I don't know how it works here, right? Here. But where I come from, you want a man to really love Jesus and sit down. You are going to have to trust God for grace. There used to be a gentleman years ago. True story. He was a capon in one of these cult groups. They call Highlanders. Somewhere around the south-south. This guy operated here in Lagos. Operated somewhere. They locked him in prison. Men who depended on his ministry came and opened him out. I mean, he would kill you like chance play. He slept on a grave for three days to receive power. Like a grave in the night. You don't move, you don't drink water, you don't lie down like that. So if you want to shoot him or kill him, he'll just like vapor. And you don't see him again. Now, true story, to cut the long story short, that gentleman came down, I don't know what brought him down to Zaria. So he came for our meetings. Ah, may you be powerful, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. The language this generation understands in the realm of the spirit. You know that this generation is not just men alone. Spirits too have their generation. The language is power. Are we together? He sat down in one of the overflows. According to him. He said that he travels to churches and when he sits down and watches men of God preaching, he just looks and says, oh dear, this is unfortunate. As weak as anything, can do anything I want to do with him. So when he came, true story, I just came on stage and as soon as I stood there, he saw people falling under the anointing outside and he said, wow, that whether this man is using divination or is using real power, there is power in this place. I opened my mouth to speak and that was the last thing he could remember. All he saw was fire. That was it. I think they carried him outside or something. I can't remember what happened. That gentleman's life changed in a way and manner. One of the gentlemen in our protocol department, right? The one who works, heads the transport unit. He was an occultist. A bad occultist. Someone invited him and he came and stood before me and I looked at him. I remember that time. In less than five minutes, he was already broken and all those nonsense left him. His friends gave him seven days to return. They dead him. Seven days has become more than a decade. Listen, let me tell you. Until men see a display of the authentic power of God, they have a right to question it. Our fathers didn't go to school 
but goodness they had power these men had power with God and power with men the story he gave about Apostle Babalola and the rest I don't know if you watched a video I'm sure it was on I'm not so much on social media but there was a video one time of a river that just came out somewhere in the east one river that just evolved out of nowhere huh? with water and people were running and jumping there and getting healed throwing their crutches you, you remember that time the way we are busy looking for money in this country self. even when things are happening like this nobody has the time to go and check you just which what river let me go and make sure that my allowance is released now but on a serious note when that happened and they brought the video and I looked at it I said for me I'm not concerned whether it is demonic or, or whatever the issue is over 3,000 people with no invitation in a dirty river in this our excellent world that even when there is no fan you can complain and those people came if you see the intelligent people passing through that dirty water one woman was just bathing herself passionately in that river that's to tell you listen is to tell you that beyond all these formations people are looking for real results real results you would thank pastor after this conference you would come and kneel down and say pastor thank you help that lady please men of god are not powerful again the limit of our power is this falling down that's it once you can get someone to fall down, you move around as if you were given an award. Power is shown by the testimonies that follow. That you sit under an atmosphere, even if it's by mistake. L let me tell you this. If you were going somewhere and this is a shrine, and you enter by mistake, and say, sorry, I was looking for a junction. Your life would never be the same just because you entered by mistake. The man will say, bye bye, go. Until you see him later. You say, you came to see me. He said, no, I was just passing. I made it a personal goal. The highest time you must meet me to change is once. There is no reason why you should meet me twice to be changed. You can meet me twice to grow. But it's a cry I cried to God for many years. I said, Lord, put something on this vessel. That if I contact you once, you know by heaven and by earth that your life will never be the same. This is the only thing that will make Gentiles come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Praise the Lord. I remember prophesying to a king, a first class king in this country. And God gave him a major breakthrough and he invited me to come and pray in his palace. And, when, and you know when you get to the palace, you remove your shoe. I was, he said, I should enter. Those guys that hold uh, this thing were looking at me. And man, I said, don't, don't try me. You don't know what I did to your God that is bringing you. You know, these people just want to insult your intelligence because... One of the things you must receive in this conference is a true impartation of spiritual power. Results that show that you can go back home and say, Mommy, I came back from a conference. Where did you go to? You say, I came some, I left a soul. But when I went to a conference, I met a man. I hear that in this family, nobody rises. But I have come as one sent. I was mentored enough to know that the power of the Holy Spirit is not just for men of God. And you stand and pass a decree to the heavens. And things begin to shift and change. By next Sunday, it's your parents that will come with you to church. Listen. Listen. Let me tell you this. You know why many people don't go to church? Their reasons are justified until the demonstration of the power of God proves otherwise. They are tired of wasting their time. Nobody lives what works. 
nobody it's not in the economy of men to live what works by the time you sit for three hours your spiritual life is changed your business shifts everything about your life changes why will you not come by 5 30 and wait in the days of the generals by 2 a.m they would stand on the queue waiting for a six o'clock service we need power genuine power genuine spiritual power no revival please hear me let's stop flattering ourselves with these tiny miracles here that create controversy we are not even sure whether it happened or not we are talking of notable miracles dimensions of the workings of the spirit that even unbelievers will testify and say i don't love their god but this one is too spectacular for silence Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Many of you heard the testimony. Now, it's not, it's not an encouragement to be lazy. But this is a pastor that came from my degree. And he came and then relocated and all of that. And because of resources, finances and all of that, um, they, he had to suspend. The wife was still schooling. And, oh, praise God, the light is back then. He had to suspend her schooling for one, was it one semester or one session so that they could stabilize. And then now that God helped them, they were going to go back so that she would finish up. You, you get the whole idea now? And then he came for one of our meetings, I think with the wife or so. When everything was done, the meeting was over. This is the testimony. When they went back to her school and then they wanted to now go and register, they saw her result with A's and B's. She's done. Not one of those, those nonsense stage managed things that people come and stand on stage and, and speak garbage. It's old wives fables. Real miracles with signs. The man stood there. The woman stood there. What is this? Don't get used to your pain. Oh, there are anointings designed to trivialize challenges. See, let me tell you this. There are men that have done business with God. This is not pride. There are men that God has vowed a vow with. They have died to themselves. Death has worked in them. Shalom brakatoska de brakata. Shikes kabaru zamahas kabarun de keta ebre zato jamarus ke marutasia. Hallelujah. Please give us Psalm 66. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Say unto God, how terrible are thy works. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. It takes power to deliver what is yours to arrive. It takes power to mentor a territory, to, to break the gate. It says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Look, in two minutes, someone just lift your voice and enough is enough that everything that does not subscribe to
to the power of God in your life that in this conference he must let you go. Please lift your voice in two minutes and pray. Listen, listen to me. When I was going to start ministry, I watched a documentary and Pat Robertson of CBN, 700 Club. He said when he was starting ministry, pastor, he asked the Lord of three things. He said, Lord, don't send me like this. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing for signs and wonders. When I had it, I said, that's it. I went to God to in a fast. I said, don't send me like this. The people you are sending me to need real results. Don't send. I don't want to be a preacher fighting another man of God. Fight. No. Brand your impact with genuine signs. I prayed a prayer and I cried to God. I said, Lord, any meeting you send me to, that whoever comes to, whether he's outside or wherever, by that contact, shift them to dimensions that will surprise them. Listen to me. Please listen. I submit to you that as a man of God, if the power of the Holy Spirit is not evident in your life, there is a dimension of revival you cannot capture. Hallelujah. There must be a heavy investment. The last four rows, I'm seeing fire just coming down. The last four rows. The last four rows. The last four rows. Shelanda Prakodasiana, please move. The last four rows. Eladu Shalabrande Kaparuska Dabash. The Gratos and the Hashalabrande Katos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bukola. Bukola. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name. Bukola. Bukola. Huh? No. 
the person is wearing blue. No, not you, a, like a head tie and a cloth, matching cloth. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. A head tie and match. Please help them. Make, um, are there ushers there? Please, so that we don't have. Who, I'm, this is what I'm Who is that? What's your name? Bukola. Bukola. Bio. B A Y O. Not Dio. Bio. B now like ball. B A Y O. B A Y O. B A Y O. Please, where is that gentleman? Bio. Something in your shirt you are wearing is like brown. Here, your hand. It's not the same color with what you are wearing. This is, I'm seeing something like that in a vision. I want to pray. Don't, please don't come out randomly. Right, we are going to continue. One, two, three, four. Four miscarriages you've had. You've not had a child. Please, who is that? I don't know if you are here or someone. Help to coordinate them, please. Except God is not God. Whatever challenge came here with you, I stand by the God of heaven. He must let you go in this conflict. What, what, what's that? Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. Who is um, Deborah? Deborah. I'm hearing a name, Deborah. 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 You are wearing a strange kind of weave on. Is it wig or weave on now? This lady's thing is like, is it purple? Like purple or something like that. Who is that? Verify. Just is her name Deborah? My dear, are you Deborah? God is about to turn your family around. Oh, I see what I saw now. That's what color is this? Blue. Blue. This is blue. Ladies, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord wants to bring. Look at me. The month of August is a strange month of breakthrough for your family. Strange month of breakthrough for your family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a gentleman now that will begin to prophesy. The hand of God will come strong. When that happens, please bring the gentleman. It's not something you can control. It's the power of God that will come on you. The Lord is asking me to speak. Just one minute and we'll sit down. Carry the gentleman and bring him, please. In the name of Jesus. Why is it? By you. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you. I decree and declare. Sounds of victory. I'm hearing people laughing by the Spirit. No, no, I mean under the anointing. Strange laughter. Strange laughter by the Spirit. It's not something that is mechanical. Please bring that gentleman. When I'm done with you, you just go, just shift. I just want to prophesy to you. Madam, this woman, lift your hand. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing come upon your life and shift you. That chain I'm seeing on your hand, I break that chain right now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break that chain right now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Now, please listen, everyone. Play the keyboard for me. I've shared your pastor's burden. Um, this, this, this land, when he spoke about someone who was injured, I don't know whether the people are here who were injured because of the stampede yesterday. I know that there are crowds of people here. Um, I lead a very, very large ministry. And I know what it is and the pain when people are injured. And it is not something that I usually would do. But honestly, I discern that this is true. I'm calling on everybody following and everybody watching. Let's put our hands together. I will also participate. Let's put our hands together and see to it that by the grace of God, that this property is fully acquired by this ministry. Are we in agreement on this? So that, so that there can be an expansion and it can make room. I feel very pain that a number of people are locked up inside and outside there. And it is usually not my culture to do this boss. It is the way of the kingdom that every time the tabernacle is about to be built, the resources come from the people. So it is not unscriptural. It is true that people have been manipulated. It is true that people have siphoned resources to put in their pocket. And I continue to say that any man of God that deceives God's people, God will judge that person. That is true. I do not believe in manipulating people. A man of God's blessings should come from his obedience to the principles of the kingdom. Are we together? So it is, it is a very, very serious thing. And I know that, I don't know how, maybe this announcement has been made before, but I know there are people following online. There are ministries following online. There are businesses following online. I'm aware of, of a threshold amount that can and should be committed. Uh, I will not announce it because of the logistics around it, but it is very, very important. I know the property is in hundreds of millions and a lot of people should put resources down some of you god has helped you i know that there are many of us that god you know is still helping we are coming up some of us god has helped us we have seen the faithfulness of god in our lives and some of us here represent companies represent businesses represent ministries represent organizations that are doing well are we together and i do not want this project to be a project where you sit down and say let the rich go and give money they are the ones that have money that philosophy is what keeps people down number two never do anything by force and coercion especially as it regards giving if there be a willing heart, that's the system of the kingdom. Because every time you come by force and coercion, you've already lost the blessing. But number three, never again say, I don't have something to give. It's not true. Everybody is a giver. But your giving is directed towards your area of passion. That's why you can drop 10 naira as offering and buy a shoe of 100,000. It's not that you are broke is that where your treasure is that's where your heart is praise the lord i don't even stay in lagos but i i reckon with the fact that this is a move of god I, and and i'm standing to lend my integrity and to lend everything on this project to say let's put hands together pastor Dele is a man of god who loves god and i know sincerely i love him and his wife 
and it will be it will be unchristian to just come and see a project like this and all the team the people that work hard to make this thing this conference has been running for five days laboring in the spirit and building we have the last session tonight that i will not want you to miss for any reason because truly that will be a defining moment for you but right now as i just pause here um i really want to challenge us i don't know how this thing will be but i have everybody if you are a minister you can sow as a person you can sow as a ministry we have to put our hands together the account number is open this is on the screen there and you can do a transfer it's a sacrifice it's not a seed let me just say it up front it's a sacrifice and it's not a seed praise the Lord now let me let me say something um, if God put in your heart by his grace and you have the capacity to sow from a million naira and above please I would like you to see pastor I would like to at least pray for you because a million naira is a sacrifice and it's, it's not that I trivialize everybody's sacrifice but um, someone should not commit a million naira and then you look at the person and say oh god bless you no you should be able to encourage the person are we together now there's nothing to hide there's nothing to pretend there's no games to play this is true i know that there are people here who are agreeing and saying look if we can have around more than the people here we have people following online and if everybody can say look i'm bringing a million two million five million ten million and all of that you can pray and all of that but we have to make this thing work we have to make this thing work so um there may not be time and i don't want us to go into the ceremony of now saying if you want to give a million and above you come out here but this is what will happen please listen and i don't want you to just get emotional and come out to make pledges that you cannot redeem and create the expectation of a ministry and then run away and change your line and do some of these dubious things we are christians praise the lord let every man give as he has purposed in his heart but also there are seasons when even your bread you cast it upon the water and the bible says you will find it after many days praise the lord so you will you will join me i'm praying that at least all those who will be listening to this this is my own target i am praying that god will touch the heart of 200 people to bring the sacrifice of a millionaire around the world. This is my prayer. That God, and we are going to pray together. Praise the Lord. 200 people to bring the sacrifice of a millionaire. And I will be the first of them. Praise the Lord. Yes. It will be, it will be unfair. It will be unfair to make such a call and then stand. We as men of God must be examples. Praise the Lord sincerely it's something that i prayed and i said no we have to be part of this so this is me number one and we're trusting god that all the people that god is going to be speaking to some are in lagos some listening some will be listening to this maybe after this time please understand that the morale is not just to raise money as you are used to let me correct this very clearly because I know that there are ministries that don't have any project that is worthwhile but just that obsession to continue to extract resources don't confuse what we're doing with some manipulation somewhere this is a ministry of integrity I'm a man of integrity myself praise the Lord so but this is a call that is necessary and when it has to be uh, to something that is for our king we must stand on our shame praise the Lord no one is coerced no one is manipulated the ark of god was always designed to be carried upon the shoulders of men so if there be a willing heart as the lord speaks to you you probably may not be able to have a million naira but five hundred thousand two hundred thousand a hundred thousand fifty thousand let there be something that when you see this building tomorrow you will know that my seed played a role in someone's salvation that as lives are being changed 
you are not doing it just because you want to be blessed first you are doing it because you love the Lord and it's an honor to be part of this revival that is coming and then secondly because he has so programmed in his system that every time we give there is a system of multiplication that also comes this is the correct theology of giving are we together now so please you are here and you know that God has put it in your heart even if you are online online and God is putting it in your heart whether you are a member of this church or not you can go ahead to call and and then once you get in touch with Pastor Dele um, he will give you the information I promise that I will talk with you personally and I will pray with you and bless you I really will do it it's not some stage managed thing so for those who have that capacity and God is granting you grace you can talk to your loved ones about it there is a worthy project that demands the heart of people who love God and once that happens as we're done please as pastor directs I will be glad to talk with you in the office to pray and speak over your life is that all right can we rise and pray on this project in one minute lift your voice and say father this land we receive it and we receive the resources this is the land that has blessed you many of you have received prophetic words is someone praying I believe that by this call a miracle is going to happen here father in the name of Jesus we declare we possess this land we possess this land we possess this land we are trusting you, O oh God, for over 200 people by the Spirit of God that you will touch to come in, not by coercion, not by manipulation, according to the measure of the grace that you have provided for the sake of the house of God, not for personal aggrandizement, not to form the lust of the flesh, but to see Jesus lifted and to turn this place into an apostolic and a prophetic center of revival we decree and declare right now we first sow the seed of prayer we sow the seed of intercession and we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost we are willing givers we are contributors in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for everyone generally father we still believe you are the God that delivers you are the God that lifts you are the God that blesses you are Ebenezer I have shared with your people and one of the things we have learned about you is that you are a God of miracles your people have tabernacled here right from Wednesday Thursday Friday yesterday and into this morning they have made sacrifices of their time their resources to listen and to hear you speak to us I pray in the name of Jesus that every issue of concern every issue that you left behind to focus on Jesus may that issue of concern live your life now may that issue of concern come to an end now I plant in you a hunger for the things of God in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I decree and declare that whatever has stolen your passion away from God and away from the things of the spirit let there be a restoration of the same I speak over your life and over your families the evidence they must see in this season to convince them that Jesus is still alive through your hands may that evidence be birthed I say it again the evidence the testimony what must be seen by your loved ones that will convince them that the God of dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye